Well, welcome in the name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. We live in an interesting, challenging hour. Paul said it's a perilous time, but we the church need to understand that we are called to glorify Him, even in this dark and difficult time. In fact, we are told to arise and shine. And you look and say, how can I? It's impossible. It seems that everything around us is, is closing down. Uh, and there's such a resistance and hindrance. And we look and say, God, it's simply impossible. I also like to think as we look at the church and we say, God, where's the power? And yet heaven responds with a clear answer. Behold, I put before you an open door. Join with me as we lay hold of what does that mean, that open door, and how do we press through it. And I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. And I just pray that this would be such a word in season for this hour to minister to you, to so provoke you and stir you and cause faith to arise, that you would enter into that living now relationship and walk with a now living faith and hope and love. And Father, we thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. And Holy Spirit, we yield to you. Come and make known Jesus. Come and reveal him. And let the word speak with an authority into the lives of each person. Father, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. We need to so much lay hold of how by the word to step into his perfect will and purpose and move forward. I love the fact that Jesus, uh, after the last Passover, sits and tells his disciples how he has glorified the name of the Father and will glorify it. So in going to the cross, in that whole process, he continued to glorify the Father. In that dark hour where everything was just, you know, all the things that were happening to him, Jesus glorified the Father. And we are called in this hour. It doesn't matter how dark it is. It doesn't matter how bad it looks outside. We are called to glorify Him. And we do so by awakening. We do so by learning to have our ears open to hear what He has to say. Now, if you will turn with me to Isaiah chapter 56. And in verses 4 through 5. Because I believe it's an hour where we need to be so swallowed up in his love in the secret place. So consumed with it that we are raptured up in him even now. In Isaiah 56 verse 4, let not the foreigner, and we could translate that, let that the unbeliever, the Gentile, the ones that were you know, cast off, that were not qualified, that the religious people said, you're not worthy of it. The foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord. And I'm glad to say I'm one of those. You may say all what you want about me. And I was disqualified. I was a foreigner. But I have joined myself to the Lord by the precious blood, by what Jesus did. And it says, the Lord will surely... Now listen, listen very carefully what it says here. Let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. Now, as you look around, many people are saying, I feel separated, cut off. You know, as if you are disqualified. But listen carefully what the Lord is saying to the church in this hour. Neither let the eunuchs say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, and those who choose what pleases me, and hold fast my covenant, to them I will give my house, and my walls a memorial, and a name better than that of sons and daughters, and I will give them an everlasting name which will not be cut off. God is on the move right now. And God is looking for those who say, I am yours. I hold fast your covenant. I want to continue here. Smith said this. And Smith Wigglesworth was referred to as the apostle of faith. He was a man that understood uh, faith and he would walk in a very bold faith in his life and ministry. And he said, how great should be our faith for we cannot be saved except by faith we cannot be kept but by faith we can only be sorry we can only be baptized by faith and we can only be caught up by faith therefore what a reality is faith in the living god we in this hour 
should lay hold of. How much faith did it take for you to receive Jesus, to come to that place where you understood by the Spirit of the living God what Jesus did, and you received His salvation? It didn't take, and we're told that the faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. See, we think, I need to have this great faith. You need a living faith, because a living faith grows. A living faith impacts and moves and does things. And we're looking for something that's big, and God's looking for something living. Now, let me continue here. Smith said, faith is the glorious knowledge of a personal presence within you changing you from strength to strength, from glory to glory, until you get to the place where you walk with God. And God thinks and speaks through you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, it is grand, it is glorious. This is the secret place. Now more than ever, we need to come and abide and cling. We need to sit and stay a little longer in the secret place of His presence. This is not a time to play games. This is a time where heaven is calling those who choose the everlasting covenant to come and to seek His face. See, we can do all these things that look good, sound good, and may even really be good, but without being plugged in at the source, without this living fellowship with the living God, everything that we do is dry and barren and dead. But see, when I'm plugged in, then there's a life that flows through me that's bigger than me. And God always wants to do something that's beyond you. And He will call you, particularly in this hour, because we're going to discover this, the way God works and thinks and moves, is God always calls us to something beyond us, beyond what we can do in the natural. God is not interested in how great you are, great your ministry is, your great marketing skills, or any of that. Now, He can use them when they're submitted, but He can use you regardless. And if we understand this, and one of the things I've discovered recently is that we can gain so much by just going after, clinging, and saying, God, I'm seeking you, recognizing that you know more than I do. And you can show me and teach me and, and lead me into something that's beyond me. In Genesis 3.8, we're talking about, let's go back to the garden. And Adam and Eve are, of course, in the garden. Now listen to this very carefully. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees in the garden. Now, first of all, a couple things I want to stop here and say. Um, The word, they heard the sounds. That was the voice or the word of the Lord. So uh, you can imagine is that Jesus comes walking in the garden. And this term, the cool of the evening, is a really bad translation because it is the word ruach. And the word ruach means breath or wind. And we use that term, of course, uh, the breath of the holies, or the breath of the secret place, uh, which is the name given to the Holy Spirit. He is the holy ruach. Jesus would breathe on his disciples, and you can imagine he places ruach onto them and said, receive the holy breath of the Lord. And on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came as a mighty rushing wind, or a breath from heaven. So if you go back now, just get what I'm saying, is that in the garden, the Spirit of God would begin to move. The wind would begin to blow. Now understand, back at that time, which is before the flood, there was no rain, there was no wind. So they knew the minute they felt the wind, the moment they saw the the wind move in the garden, the Lord was coming. And the Lord, the Word was there. And you get the Spirit of living God and the Word. There's something powerful. But they had so missed it. And the Holy Spirit always comes. And what does He do? He convicts. And they felt convicted. The minute the Spirit of God began to move, they were convicted. And I want to say another thing. That God, the Spirit of God, is beginning to move. And the first thing that we, His people, should recognize is a holy conviction where the Spirit of God is convicting and moving in our lives and saying, this should go. 
and not shook of this musk of, and he wants to expose in us all areas of darkness because Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle he wants to wash us with the water of his word so the water the word you have to have the move of the spirit and so in this hour there's a movement of the spirit and a movement of the word following it amen now Smith Wigglesworth said, God wants us to have far more than that which we can handle and see. And so he speaks of the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But with the eye of faith, we may see it all in its beauty and grandeur. God's word is from everlasting to everlasting, and faith is the substance. Now, see, the enemy at the fall, I want us to lay hold of this. He came along, and how did he deceive? By convincing them that his words were greater than the words of the Master, than greater than the words of the living God. When you see, as you read the Old Testament, every time God speaks to men, he uses the term Lord God. He's not God. Go to the store of creation. God created the heavens, He created the earth, He created this. But in every interaction with man, He is Lord God. Because man needs to recognize and come under His Lordship. That is why when we talk about the secret place, it's he who abides in the secret place of the Most High shall come under the shadow. We surrender, submit, and put ourselves under His authority. And so we have to first recognize that His voice, His word, is absolute clear authority. In this hour, what's being challenged and what is really at stake here is whose voice are you going to listen to? Whose voice are you going to receive? The world has bought and drunk the Kool-Aid and they accept everything the enemy says. And he has so deceived them that they think that they're walking right but they change with every wind of everything, I should say. But the Spirit of God is looking for a people that are not moved by what they see, not dictated to by what they hear, but rather trust God's Word. This is something powerful because what separates us and lifts us is God wants to bring us into the very way that He works and operates, which is by faith in His Word. Because the enemy can't. The enemy walks by fear. And from the very get-go, when the minute that Adam and Eve fell, fear filled them. They walked in fear and they had to pull back out of fear. They didn't run and say, God, we've missed it. See, the enemy never wants you to address and deal with issues. He never wants you forgiven and cleansed. He never wants you to run to the very person that you need to get healed and restored. He wants you so held in bondage by fear and discouragement, hiding in the trees, pulling back. So that what is your protection? Trees. Since the very fall, man has looked at that which was created as a protection and not the Creator, not the one who made all things. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, listen to this. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Can you put a hand up there? If you're born of God, if you received Jesus, then God has put in you his DNA. You are a child of the living God. And so we are to walk differently. We walk by the Spirit. Do you remember Nicodemus? And Nicodemus asked Jesus some questions. And Jesus gave him two powerful things. He said that through being born again, we can see the kingdom and we can enter the kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom, and it's only by the Spirit that we can enter in and receive of that. And so God wants, as we receive Jesus, to begin to walk in and by the Spirit, walk in a way that the enemy can't, so that we always overcome. He goes on, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes Jesus is the Son of God. So we, by faith, overcome. And faith is a substance and assurance. It's the down payment. It's the confirmation in us of that word, of something that we cannot see, we cannot hear, we cannot touch. But in our spirit, we know. 
because we don't go by the natural, we go by the spirit. And in the spiritual realm, the word carries highest authority, not what my natural senses speak to me. Further, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 through 9, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage. I say, I prefer rather to be absent from the body and be at home with the Lord. I can go along with that, particularly in this hour. I'd rather be absent from this physical body and be home with the Lord. That's my home with Him. But therefore we also have our ambition, whether at home with Him or absent, which is where we're at right now, to be pleasing to Him. And we know from the book of Hebrews chapter 11 that without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So we are on this earth for a purpose to please Him, to walk by faith, to produce and to do something. You are here on this earth no longer for yourself, but for Him. And we must get our eyes off of us because the enemy right now, the work of the enemy is so to get you self-focused, to have you filled with fear and to paralyze you. The work of the Lord is to get you focused on others, that you no longer live for yourself, but you live for Him and for others. And if we will do this by faith, we will please Him and we'll find that we're co-workers with Him and the Lord God will open a door for us. Now, Smith Wigglesworth went on to say this, God without material, spoke the word and produced this world with all of its beauty. There was no material there, but the word of God called it into being by his creative force. And the knowledge that you and I are begotten by this incorruptible word, which liveth and abideth forever, you know that within you is this living, definite hope, greater than yourself, more powerful than any dynamic force in the world. For faith worketh in you by the power of the new creation of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, with the audacity of faith, we should throw ourselves into the omnipotence of God's divine plan. For God has said, if you canst believe, all things are possible for him who believeth. There is a realm where God wants to come into where we so believe Him that the enemy who wants to hold us, he wants to so uh, traumatize us and hold us captive by fear, paints this image. He brings the facts that are natural. But remember, that which is of the natural order is temporal, is fleeting, and will pass. That's the problem with the natural man. That's the problem that we struggle with. See, we look at everything around us and we consider it eternal, permanent. But the reality is it's temporal. It is short-lived. And in the light of eternity, it is not even a blip. And if we could recognize, particularly we who live in this generation, as we see the shakings, the warnings from heaven of the hour that we live in, that we should have our eyes on eternity because we are not of this world. And that's the a critical ingredient for us Christians. We are not of this world. We're looking for a city, not of this earth, but as in heaven. And it's sad that so many believers in this hour are persuaded. We want to change the world. We want to make the world a better place. We are here to see souls come to the knowledge of Jesus. We are here to make an impact for Jesus. But we're here looking and longing for a city in heaven. We are passing through and we need to go outside the camp and bear his reproach, particularly in this hour where the call from heaven is, come out from her, come out from amongst her. This world system, this idea that this is normal life, not for us. We have a different normal life, a life where we walk in and by the spirit, where we mature as we press in and walk by the spirit. It is essential, therefore, that day after day we spend more time in the secret place, learning to hear and yield and walk by the Spirit, to get into the Word and build our lives upon the Word because it's the Word that upholds all things. And it's by the Word that God 
releases and decrees all things. Everything God does, He does by the Word. Everything God calls forth, it's by the Word. And God stands on the Word which is from everlasting to everlasting. The one thing that will not change is the Word. Everything else that we see right now, there is coming a day where it will be gone. It will be consumed by fire, but not His Word. His Word will never fail, and it will never end. His Word is faithful. Now, in Romans 10, verse 17, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word. So faith comes by hearing. What you hear is so important. And the only way to have a hearing that produces a living faith is the Word. It's in the secret place where we have our ears open by the Holy Spirit so we hear it. I love the story of Abraham. Abraham, the Lord declared, you are a father of many nations. And I think I quoted that. If not, I will get, I, I know I have it in here. You are a father of many nations. Yet, now think about this. That's what his name meant, Abraham, a father of many nations. So anybody that walks up and said, Abraham, if they understood the translation, understood that, that they were saying, you are a father of many nations. But that's not what they heard. They heard Abraham. They heard a man's name. They saw a man. They saw his history. They saw everything about him. Aren't you grateful that when God calls your name, he doesn't see your um, credit history. He doesn't see all that you've done. Know what he sees? He sees your purpose in him. He sees who you are and the hope that he has for you and the promise that he has given you. And so Abraham, when he would hear the word Abraham, he heard, I am a father of many nations. So he heard the promise. And it always comes down to what do we hear? Because the enemy wants you so in tune with the bad report, so in tune, particularly in this hour, Instead of us looking and saying, it's exactly like Jesus said it would be. Do you remember the 12 spies? The 10 go in and come back and said, yeah, it's like the Lord said, but we're just grasshoppers. We're just, they're giants. The other two come back. It's like the Lord said, so let's go take it. Let's go take it. And are we looking and saying, it's exactly, we're seeing on the earth everything he said. If he said it, and he said, I will be with you always, and if he said we're going to discover an open door, then let us trust him and let us move forward. I want to have in the secret place such a connection with him that inside of me there's a living hope. It grows. See, something living grows, increases, breathes, reproduces, moves. And so that word in me, that promise in me, it has to grow. It has to be that in the secret place, I take time every day and I water it by taking the word and receiving the word and just saying, Holy Spirit, show me, teach me. I go after him. I'm, I'm here in Psalm 119, verse 14. You are my hiding place and my shield. I wait for your word. I wait for it. And now more than ever, I just got him here waiting. I don't want to assume. I don't want, I've been, you know, there's, there's, there's some process improvement things that I've been part of. And in it, one of the first rules is you don't assume the answer. Because we've all worked out what the answer is. And they said, no, you've got to sit there and go through the problem. And then step by step work towards an answer. I've learned the importance of not assuming what the Lord has and is going to say. Or when I read the scripture, assuming what it means. I'm here. I'm allowing the Spirit of God. I'm going to give Him the time to say, show me, teach me, open this up bit by bit. I'm going to kill every ounce of impatience, particularly in this hour, because I need to hear what you have to say. There are issues that I'm being challenged by, and I'll come back, to, you know, maybe every hour, every day, keep coming back until I hear what you have to say. I think of, for example, David. 
And David, before he would go to war, would seek the Lord and say, will you give me the victory? How many of us sit there and wait until we get the response? We assume it. And then when things go wrong, it's clearly God's fault. Or do we walk in a holy fear where I am waiting and I will not go forward until that I know that I know that I know? Because when I'm in that place, there is a living hope that stirs in me, connected with His presence. Because I know and I recognize, I know Him. Day after day, I'm getting to know His, his presence, to know His heart, to know what He's like. And I've learned part of that, that key to that is a holy fear that I will not assume. I will not translate based on my opinions and my circumstances, but I'm going to trust Him because His Word has to be authority. He has to be Lord. He is higher than me. He is greater. That's why it's the secret place of who? The Most High. We're not on equal levels. He's greater than me. He's the Master. I am not. And so I come and I sit and humble myself to hear His Word. Now, in Romans 4, verse 17 through 18, as it is written, a father of many nations, I made you in the presence of him whom he believed. I just want to stop there. In the presence. See, it's in the presence of the living God, where God speaks over you that purpose. It's in the presence that he makes you so that every day that I come and I take the time in his presence, he makes me. He works on me. He shows me. He, he takes me. I don't want to, as I said, assume. I just want to take the time and wait and say, God, I'm trust. I need you. I absolutely need Particularly this hour, we need him. And it goes on. Even God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. Did you get that? He calls things that be not as though they were. God operates differently. His thoughts are not your thoughts. His ways are not your ways. They're higher. And how does he operate? God calls things. There's something in him. When God created the heavens and the earth, he didn't say, let there be, and then stand back. and Wow, wasn't expecting that. Inside of him, in this infinite complexity, he had it all planned out. He had it all worked out. And so he said, let there be that which was in him by faith. He released it by his mouth, and it came forth, and it was. See, God knows perfectly the perfect plan for you in an infinite complexity. If he can get us to the place where we trust, in this place where we humble ourselves. I love this term, waiting. I'm doing a whole series on Andrew Murray because we need to get a hold of this proper waiting. And as a waiter, I am attentive to the person I'm waiting on. So I'm attentive to the Lord. I've got to hear Him. i got to see Him. And I'm watching carefully so that I get what He's into, what He's looking at, what He's doing, so that I flow with Him. I'm reading His body language. I'm reading His heart. I'm reading everything. And I'm watching if He says something I want to do so that I'm actively pleasing Him as one who waits on Him. He goes on, uh, that you might become a father of many nations, according to that which had been spoken, so shall your descendants be. God doesn't start with something that already is. And that's one of the challenges. You see, the enemy paints the picture based on reality right now. God paints a hope based on what's in him, based on that perfect plan. And he's calling us, let's walk with me. Walk by faith with me. And as you do, I will transform you. Because something about a living faith that's always found in His presence, because it's of God. Remember, little children, you're born of God. Faith is of God. It's a substance. It comes from Him. It comes as He imparts to us the vision, as He imparts to us the hope. He begins to show us, and you need to spend time so He can let you see it, get the glimpse. Don't run until you've got the blueprint. Don't rush out. Take the time. I've got to see this. I've got to hear this. I've got to know this until it's clear. You know, most people are like men. We don't need instructions. We don't need manuals. We already know. And we're always surprised by the, all the extra pieces and parts of the end. 
because we won't take the time to read and get the blueprint, to get that plan. And God doesn't work that way. God demands that we humble ourselves in the secret place because it's only His way. It is perfect. And it's the way of life. It's the way it's always going to be bigger than you. God wants to do something beyond you so that it touches the world around you. You know, you may be standing for your loved ones, standing for your family or whatever it may be. As you fulfill the plan, as you walk faithful for Him, doing it His way, in submission to Him, He will work it so that you are blessing not just to yourself, but to the world around you. Smith went on to say, The Word of God will bring you into a wonderful place of rest in faith. God means you to have a clear conception of what faith is. Faith came and how it remains. Faith is the divine plan, for it brings you to the open door that you might enter in. You must have an open door. You cannot open the door. It is God who does it. But He wants you to be ready to step in and claim His promises to all the divine manifestation of power in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if I go to the church of Philadelphia in the book of Revelation, I believe that's speaking of the church in this hour. And it says you have a little power. Now, the Holy Spirit has not changed. The Holy Spirit has not changed and lacking in power in this hour. So what's happened? It's on our side. And we have to understand God's response and God's answer to help us walk with power is to say, listen, I carry all the authority as the key of David, and I put before you an open door that no man can shut. And right now he's speaking into your life. I put before you an open door, not one that you can open, not one that you can try in your ability. It's by absolute faith in Him. You have to come into the secret place and cling and trust Him because only He can do it in this hour. And He wants to do it to demonstrate His power, to bring you into a place that's beyond you. Right now, we're so focused on, give me that word of how to be successful. Give me the word of how to prosper. And God says, I want to give you a word of how to enter in the open door. How to cling to my word, trust in my word, and not use my word. See, we want to use the word to get what we want. God wants the word to change us, to transform us, to produce in us and through us for His glory. Just like I said at the beginning, Jesus said, I have glorified the Father and I will glorify Him. And it's hard to imagine on the cross, all that He was going through glorified the Father. And He expects us in this late, difficult, challenging hour, in everything we say, do, and think, to glorify Jesus, to bring Him honor, so that the motivation, the, what's driving it, is always to see Him glorified. If we will do that, He will put before us an open door. I have tried so often where I get an indication of what he wants and I have assumed and I've rushed out and I've tried this and tried that, been sincere, but sincerely wrong. And God is saying in this hour, I need a people that wait. See, I'm not a waiter. I'm not a patient person. I'm a go-doer. And he says, I need some people that would just be, be still in my presence and let me be God. Let me be Lord. And let me be the one that opens the door and brings you out. God has a purpose and plan and a place for you in this hour. He is the only one who can do it. And He's calling us in this hour to overcome. You were called to overcome. How do you overcome? How do you prevail? By faith. You have to walk and choose to walk by faith. Not being driven by the natural order. By what you see, what you feel, what you touch but walking by the new order, the order of the Spirit. You are a spirit person. It's time to walk by the Spirit. Let me finish with this. Living faith brings glorious power and personality. It gives divine ability, for it is by faith that Christ is manifested in your mortal flesh by the Word of God. That's power. I just, I need to stop there because see, we want to see power. And God says, I want them, the only power that the world needs to see is Jesus manifested in it through you. 
That's the real power. Not you and your great ministry and you walking in great gifts. No, Jesus magnified, revealed through you. And that's the open door. And if I will humble myself in the secret place and so surrender and yield and allow him this vessel, it's not mine anyways. It's his. And I no longer live for me. This is a generation where the church is all about me. It's all about me having this and my possessions and that. And God says, I'm shaking all things because it's an hour where faith will work up by love and love lays down its life for the brethren. And we continue. I would not have you miss the knowledge that you have heard from God and to realize that God has so changed you that all weakness, fear, inability, everything that has made you a failure has passed away. Faith has power to make God, to make you what God wants you to be. Only you must be ready to step into the plan and believe his word. You may have said, I've tried this before and done this and I've failed. I've been there. But see, that was me and my assuming and my sincerity, but wrong. I'm learning to wait in the secret place and say, God, I'm waiting until you show me. I'm waiting until the cloud moves and then I'm following it. If you don't move, I stay. If you stay silent, I wait. I'm just watching and I'm allowing you to do a work in me in the meantime. I want the world to see a real Jesus in me. They don't need to see me, they need to see Jesus. And I will cling and go after you. I will seek you so that the words that I preach are coming from you, not me. I don't want to just have an abundance of head knowledge. I want an abundance of you, more of you, less of me. Amen. Oh, I pray that this message has blessed you, ministered to you, and touched you even now. And I would ask, if it has, would you please like, share, and subscribe? Because as you do, you help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google, and I thank you. We want to impact as many people as we can in this hour. And there's so many people that need to be awakened and so shown how to step in to God's purpose and plan for them. I would also ask, would you consider joining our prayer partnership program? And you know, as part of that, and this is the great part, you get invited to our Zoom meetings where I share words and messages that I don't usually preach on YouTube. And you get times of ministry so that, you know, it's just a real time to pour in. And so if you sign up as a prayer partner, it costs you nothing. You will get our email, which is at least twice a week, with the invite to the Zoom meeting. For more information, simply go to the website. Uh, you can go to GodsGeneralsAndRevivals.com and go to the partner page. Now, if you want to be a financial partner, thank you. We appreciate that so much. It takes financial partners. I look at Jesus and how the women that came and supported him and enabled him to do what he did. And I want this ministry to, in itself, be a witness of the greatness and goodness of God. And I'm very grateful for the financial partners. Uh, to be a partner, simply go to the website and go to the donate and you can gain more information. We truly thank you for it. The hour is late and it's time for us to move forward to step up, arise, shine, and be awakened by the Spirit. It's time for us to possess the land that He has for us. Amen? Well, I pray that this message has said has blessed you, encouraged you. Check out more in the series. And that remember, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because through and for Him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you.